sure you yelled at your dad. Uh, so again, yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate what Pastor Gordon just said. Uh, thank you to um, all the people that helped make this service where it is today. Fantastic. Uh, Pastor Gordon, uh, you're with yourself. Uh, my mom wanted to make a special, and you mentioned it in the, in the service, but a uh, special thanks to everybody at Island Lutheran Church for supporting you over the last six months. I cannot be more appreciative of your son. Um, I know it's given her a lot of strength and encouragement, and uh, thank you so much. Also, I want to make a special thank you to um, Schwanzi Ren uh, for a last minute live streaming service. Uh, unfortunately, my ex wife's sister Judy could not make it. Her flight got canceled yesterday, so with a quick turnaround, uh, we were able to get that live stream so she could she could watch the service today. And then, what a great service it was! So, so thank you all. Um, and again, just thank you for coming to this um, celebration of life, a, a, a really a life very well lived. But before I even speak about my dad, I also want to speak about my mom. Where's my mom? There she is. There she is. Um, my sisters and I have been extremely fortunate to have parents who loved us and, and loved each other. Um, Martin, Dorothy, mom and dad. Uh, there were you know certainly weeks where they were apart, particularly when my dad was doing a lot of traveling for work. But together for you know 60 years, they were and a great example to us. Uh, and then we moved to South Carolina about 23 years ago. They had more tightness because they had spent more time together. Uh, more burden on my mom, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, again, a great example for us all. And late last year, you all know, of course, why we're here today. My mom lost her partner six decades. And uh, certainly has brought substantial change to her. Um, and again, with your support, she's made it through. Um, last month was Mother's Day. And my wife, Angela, buys the Mother's Day cards for me to send. And it kind of surprised me, no, Angela. And she found just the perfect Mother's Day card that then expressed how proud I was, or I am, of my mom and the strength she's shown over the last six months in dealing with substantial change. So um, I know, and Pastor said it in the, in the, the homily today, you know, I know a lot of you here in the Low Country are sad to see her go. And frankly, I'm a bit sad to see her go as well because I certainly enjoy coming down here and visiting. But we are very, very happy to have her closer to us. We're in Minnesota, but closer to Holly and John and their families in Michigan. So love you, Mom. Just couldn't have you more. Uh, now on to my dad. As mentioned, Big Bart, the Big Bopper, the old Hassan Pepper. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that one, but he called himself the old Hassan Pepper from time to time. I'm not sure why he referred to himself as German rabbit stew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I go, we were talking about, Pastor asked me yesterday, what's the one word you describe your dad? And the word I said was joy, and I stick by that. But one other one I thought about today was welcoming. Um, so, I, you know, throughout my life, my friends in high school, my friends in college, my friends in my 20s and my 30s, dad was always very, very welcoming to them. When they learned that he passed, just had very fond memories my good friend John the Jew from Purdue. Um, so I heard him refer to it, the old Hassan Pepper and would never refer to my dad to anything else from that time. Um, many of you know that one of my dad's favorite sayings, certainly around good friends and family, was, is, life is good. Um, yeah, I hope to share with you a couple of examples of why he, he lived that throughout his life. Uh, one is that in 1979, uh, our family transplanted from our Midwestern roots to the Pacific Northwest. And that was a lot of, again, substantial change for our family. Um, left back a lot of traditions, certainly left back time with relatives, and many of whom are here today. We had great times with them. Another example for me is going to Michigan State football game tailgates. Those were great experiences. But we moved to the Pacific Northwest and a new experience. And credit to my parents for embracing that opportunity. And so as opposed to you know, Michigan State tailgates, we got season tickets to Portland Timbers soccer games. Portland Timbers for some basketball. Um, as opposed to spending time with our relatives, which we sorely missed, we had the opportunity to meet new friends. Some of them are here today, uh, Shayla Proctor, and Ron and Diane Morzala, or as my dad would call them, the Rosales. <laughs> um, but then also embracing other things about living in the great Northwest. Uh, uh, be, uh, body surfing in the frigid Pacific Ocean, um, you know, visiting all the great beauty in the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, down to Central Oregon, learning to love and embrace and eat seafood. And one of my fondest memories of my dad is eating raw oysters. Whenever we'd come out to Seattle, we'd go to the Asian market, we'd get some raw oysters, we'd shove them, we'd put a bottle of salmon apple on it. It was just fantastic. So 
I'm going to Hudson's right after this, by the way, if you want to join me. I'm buying the oyster. Um, so, you know, life out there certainly was good. Life is good for us. Now, my dad wasn't naive. Uh, he knew, and Pastor mentioned this in the homily as well, that in life you have difficult times too. But what dad did really well is he, you know, through his, his actions, his demeanor, his faith, really, he got himself and our family through some tough times when we had him. And so it's a great example of that. Uh, I think many of you know that my dad was an emotional guy, uh, mostly for the positive. Um, and oftentimes that positive emotion translated through tears and tears of joy, tears of pride. So I'm going to share with you, you know, I think we all can come up with examples of where that we remember my dad tearing up, tears of pride. One vivid example was our wedding about 15 years ago here in a couple weeks. And uh, the pastor actually had to stop the service to check on my dad and make sure he was okay because he was crying so hard. <laughs> tears of joy, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> But my, my most fond memory, and this is a, I'll wrap it up with this, um, it makes me sound a little strange for the group we're having here, but bear with me. Uh, in January 2011, uh, Angela and my daughter Isabel and I visited vacation with my parents in, in Puerto Vallarta, or as my dad would call it, Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened to be in January and a week when the State of the Union address was being uh, conducted. And you think 2011, and my dad was really intent to watch the State of the Union address. And I thought that was odd because we had a Democratic president, so I didn't think my dad would be all that interested. But he was very <laughs> interested in watching the State of the Union address. And so we got together, all of us, and watched that. And uh, President Obama at that time, at the end of his speech, it was pretty standard State of the Union address, but at the end of it, he wrote, or he said, um, we, have, we may have different opinions, but we believe in the same promise that says, this is a place, America, where you can make it if you try. We may have different backgrounds, but we believe in the same dream that says this is a country where anything is possible, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from. That dream is why a working class kid from Scranton can sit behind me. That dream is why someone who began by sweeping the floors of his father's Cincinnati bar can preside as Speaker of the House in the greatest nation on earth. So that last line just made my dad totally tear up about John Boehner this is an example of someone who worked him way up and made something for himself. And I love telling you this story for a few reasons. Um, again, it's one of my vivid examples of my dad with the tears of joy, the tears of pride, an example of him and his love for his country. Uh, but also, I think you can understand why those words resonate with my dad if you know him really well. Um, certainly, he was no Barack Obama supporter, but he certainly appreciated the message that this is a country you can make it if you try, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from even including someone from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I didn't want to conclude my, my speech with a quote from a Democrat. <laughs> so I searched for a quote from somebody I knew that my dad would, would respect, and this one comes from Martin Luther. Uh, it's short, it's nine words. Martin Luther wrote, you have as much laughter as you have faith. And my dad loved the laugh. Uh, life is good, Dad. I love you.